In the moments before and after a total solar eclipse, you might just be lucky enough to witness an incredible rare phenomena, but you have to know what to look for in order to see it. So right now, I'm gonna tell you all about this strange and mysterious occurrence, as well as give you some tips to give you the best shot at seeing it for yourself. This strange occurrence has been happening for thousands of years, and somehow, we still aren't exactly sure what it is. The first written account of it dates back to a 9th century Icelandic poem, and yet scientists today are still baffled by it. These are shadow bands. Strips of thin, light and dark lines that flicker over the ground just before and after a total eclipse. They are unique and enthralling. In the 1980s, as an eclipse settled over India, a sensational display of shadow bands darted across the ground. Not knowing what was happening, one observer exclaimed, there's fire on the ground. And later the group described what they had seen as flames leaping six to 10 feet off the ground. It doesn't stop there though. In 1842, an English astronomer witnessed these strange events and wrote, as the totality approached, a strange fluctuation of light was seen upon the walls and the ground. So striking that in some places, children ran after it and tried to catch it with their hands. Shadow bands are pretty incredible, pretty strange and pretty rare. So what do we know about them? And most importantly, how can you get to see them during the upcoming eclipse on April 8th? Because if you're lucky enough and you do what I tell you in this video, you might just get to witness these incredible lights. For one thing, we know that shadow bands are incredibly fleeting. The most distinct part of them lasts under a minute. They come out only when the smallest crescent of the sun, about 1% of it, is exposed just before and after totality. This transient property of shadow bands is a huge reason why we know so little about them. I mean, something so rare, so elusive, and so fleeting is incredibly tough to study. Scientists have generated many theories as to why they occur, but currently there's one theory that prevails over all the others. We think that shadow bands appear due to an effect produced by the Earth's atmosphere that distorts the light of the sun's rays in exactly the same way that makes stars appear to twinkle in the sky. Our atmosphere is turbulent, full of wind and pockets of hot and cold air. So when we stand on the ground and look into the sky, the light we see from everything in space, the sun, the stars, other planets, has to travel through the bumpy atmosphere first before it reaches our eyes. The stars that we see in the sky are super far away from us, way, way further than the sun or the planets that we see. Because they're so far, the light from the stars appears as only tiny pinpoints and is very susceptible to this distortion. In contrast, our sun and surrounding planets are much closer to us, so they don't really twinkle as much because their light is much stronger. Still, our theory is that maybe the turbulent atmosphere of the Earth distorts the dying light of the sun during a total eclipse. With only a tiny sliver of the sun exposed, maybe this makes the light weak enough to be subject to this distortion. If this theory is true, then it's also true for us that shadow bands are pretty much impossible to predict. If they truly are occurring due to the somewhat random motion of the air molecules in the Earth's atmosphere, then we certainly won't be able to guess when and where they'll happen next. We have a few ideas on what conditions might be most likely to produce them, but as far as knowing when and where these conditions might occur, we're pretty much in the dark. <laughs> Get it? In the dark. Eclipse. Okay, anyway. It's important to note that shadow bands most commonly occur during a total eclipse but this isn't the only time that they're possible. Although it is very rare, shadow bands can also occur during a partial eclipse or an annular eclipse, and we aren't sure why. This really goes to show that even with our current theories of them, our knowledge of them is still pretty limited, and they still are these mysterious, unpredictable things in our universe. All right, so that's all pretty interesting, but I'm sure that you would like to know now how you can see those shadow bands for yourself during the April 8th eclipse. The best strategy to try and see shadow bands is to get a large piece of white paper or poster board and lay it flat on the ground where it has a clear view of the sky. Make sure there aren't any trees or buildings that will obstruct it or cast a shadow on it. Secure the poster board to the ground with some rocks and then 
you wait. If you really want to get creative with it, bring a meter stick to lay across the poster board and draw a compass on the board to mark which way is north, south, east, and west. Then set up your camera to record a video. If you do this and are lucky enough to capture the shadow bands on video, then you get to be a scientist and study their properties. You can ask questions like, how large were they? How quickly did they move? And did they maintain the same speed? What direction were they moving in? And was it in the same direction as the prevailing wind at the time or not? As well as any other questions that you're curious about. Scientific discovery starts with questions and observations. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next person to make a cool discovery about shadow bands. This has been week two of my countdown to the April 8th solar eclipse. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Dina and I make videos all about nature and science. And right now I'm doing a whole series to get you prepared for the upcoming eclipse. We'll be talking about fun things to do, the basics of what an eclipse is, and anything else to help you get excited and be informed about the incredible thing that you're about to see. On the day of April 8th, I will be taking a trip over to the Path of Totality and documenting what it's like to witness a total eclipse. So if that all sounds like fun to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that I can see you in the next one.